This video is going to cover a mortal time bias, and I'm going to be using a clinical epi example, but it applies to a lot of situations. Um, so just a little bit of background, just because this is going to be the clinical epi example I'm going to use, is there's this thing called infective endocarditis that is an infection in the valve of the heart. I guess it could be a couple valves. Um, and it's particularly associated with IV drug use, although it, it that's more of like a newly common demographic. Uh, previously to this, it was just immunocompromised demographics like the elderly. And usually with those demographics who don't use IV drugs, based on the severity of the infection, so like how large the infected area is, it's a natural progression for with like antibiotics being the, being the standard when it's not very severe. And as it builds in severity, basically it jumps to valve repair to valve replacement being the best option. Uh, this isn't how it works in people who use IV drugs. We're not really sure what the progression is. And that's because uh, when individuals who use IV drugs get valve replacement, while their body is really um, vulnerable because they're convalescing from the surgery, if they go back to using injection drugs, they're likely to get reinfected and then their mortality is likely to be very soon after that surgery, where if we had given them antibiotics instead of valve replacement, they might have lived for much longer. Um, so basically we're not sure which is best, and, and that's the basis of this project I, I'm, I'm going to be doing. Um, so as far as illustrating a mortal person time, um, in this first example, this isn't as important, but basically like this left side is the period of cohort assembly and it's going to be useful to show like when the surgery is and stuff um, but yeah the important thing is this side's measured in weeks and this side's measured in years uh, so let's just say we have these this cohort of people who are IV drug users and they've been diagnosed with infective endocarditis and I'm jumping them to here for simplicity just to show how the follow-up is actually going to occur so let's say these two are, um, I guess their antibiotics are being prescribed and it's beginning today, and these individuals had their valve replacement surgery today. In reality, this would be like something that was accumulated at varying degrees, like five year survival is what I'm looking at, so they would just look five years out from whenever uh, they got antibiotics or whenever they um, got their surgery. But yeah, just for simplicity, this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna assume it all happened at the same time. And now they all begin like accumulating time in their respective groups. This person died who was in the uh, antibiotic group. Now someone in the surgery group died and you basically figure out like five year survival comparing, like if we're gonna do that like in a crude way, it would just be like one died in each, they're equally effective. But if we're including more person time, like I guess technically the surgery group is like one year more effective, but yeah. I guess uh, this would be many more people and it would be more nuanced than this. But uh, yeah, this this is a little more of an elaborate example where we talk about what's happening in this five week time frame. And this is a situation where a mortal bias didn't occur. Um, so we have these uh, four IV drug users that all have infective endocarditis. There's a treatment decision one week after their diagnosis. Um, for this group, their treatment decision was antibiotics. They start today. And this group, uh, they have uh, valve replacement, but their surgery isn't today. They booked it and it's a couple weeks away, maybe um, So yeah, they are now accumulating time in the antibiotic group But these individuals are kind of in limbo right now because their surgery date is on week five here and Right now they're not in the antibiotic group and the only other group to be in is surgery But they're not benefiting from the surgery yet because it hasn't happened yet um so an example of when this isn't an issue is like these, these individuals are accumulating weeks in the antibiotic group. These ones are waiting. And now all of a sudden, like although they've accumulated a couple weeks in the other group, this group is now accumulating time because they had their surgery this week. So yeah, now, now you compare the groups and it's not an issue. The only thing is that one group began accumulating time at a, at a different point, but there's no immortal time issue. Uh, when there would be immortal time is when uh, when this group is in like limbo when if, if one of them dies depending on how you handle that data you might uh, create immortal time bias basically um, so if we were to just discard this person's data where um, this person died and this person hadn't died so they're just still waiting for their surgery and now uh, we just discard this person's data because they were neither on antibiotics or treated or sorry, or uh, had their surgery, 
So if we just discard that person's data and this person is now being followed, basically we create this situation where if someone who is, uh, it was decided they're gonna get surgery and they die between uh, when they're diagnosed and the surgery, that's creating a mortal time because we've made it um, basically an inclusion criteria that you need to um, be signed uh, surgery and you need to live until the surgery. If we start um, eliminating people who die prior, this group who got the surgery will end up being like a healthier subset of all of those who are eligible to get the surgery. And that's a problem because we didn't impose that on the other group. There was no immortal time. They, the living past was a criteria for the antibiotic group because they started getting it immediately. And we've created immortal time when we, when we do this, when we discard any deaths in the surgery group that happened prior to surgery. But there's a way around this, and the main one, I, I think there's others, but like the most intuitive one is to make treatment a time varying very well. Um, so what I mean by that is, this is the exact same progression of events, but instead of having these people waiting for their surgery date, you just consider everyone in the antibiotics group until something changes. And that's actually not that unreasonable because um, when these two people went in and antibiotics was just the immediate decision, they, they started. And even though these people have their surgery in a few days, they're likely giving them something. Like they're probably on antibiotics in the meantime. Um, so yeah, if we treat treatment as time varying, then these ev basically everyone right now is accumulating time in the antibiotics group. This person died, and instead of being discarded, we just uh, they were in the antibiotic group when they died, so they contributed two weeks to the antibiotic group. Now this individual had their surgery, and although they've logged four weeks in the antibiotic group, now they start accumulating time in the surgery group. And yeah, that, that's basically how you take care of a mortal person time.